back. Um, it's Friday night's poetry prompts with plants, painting, and poetry. So we're doing a continuation of the theme of soil or dirt. We're going to dig a little deeper, and that's kind of since since uh, computers are catching on fire. Let me slow down and tell you a story, okay? So when we began creating a YouTube channel. Part of it was to figure out what goes into making a YouTube channel, right? Because it literally, in some ways, is free space. Like, it's a free stage. And if you're an artist or a performer, a big part of your life is trying to find places to make art, you know, the resources to make art. In fact, I think most artists are working to make just enough to pay for the art, to pay to make more art. So most artists work very hard at their art to make enough money at art so that they can make more art. That's a hard thing to explain to someone that doesn't quite understand it, but I think everyone understands it because everyone has their thing, right? The thing that brings them in. And so um, one of the things we found out about making your own YouTube channel because it's like free space, but of course nothing is entirely free, is that once you have all of this material, like you filmed it, you've like collected stories and images, uh, you can literally just drown, <laughs> drown your computer in uh, information. And when a computer drowns, it actually lights on fire. So Anthony, our brilliant Anthony, who is in charge of like sort of the artistic direction of this, the cinematography of this, editing these stories all together, his, his poor computer caught on fire. So we're just waiting to um, figure out how to get the resources to uh, get back on track. But until then, we're gonna just take it slow and um, do what we can manage until we're in the full swing of um, artist interviews and all of that as well. So we'll see if this explore, explanation makes it into the final cut of the poetry prompts, but I thought I would just remind you guys, like we are still in the topic of soil, the theme of soil, and we're still waiting to meet up with Warren Sherrick, who has made an underground museum in his backyard. And I really loved, like I was hanging out with Warren the other day, and he said to me, I may never light the world on fire with my art, but I will, lo I will light my own world on fire with art. I'm so mad that I messed that up, so I'm going to say it again. So Warren Sherrick, I may never light the world on fire with my art, but I will light my own world on fire with my art. Also, a um, lot of questions. The big question that we keep on getting is like, why are you doing this? Why are no one asked you to make a YouTube channel about plants, painting, and poetry, and that's true. And so the funny thing about this YouTube channel is it is a YouTube channel that you're going to ask why are you doing that, and the whole point behind the YouTube channel is to answer the question, why would anyone do this? <laughs> so we're digging deeper, which means um, there's a couple things that I want to sort of start you guys out on. So our first, our first lesson Remember I had your obsession journal where I wanted you guys to, you know, just document every day the things that you find interesting, like a visual sort of obsession of your world. Here's the thing that I love about poetry most is to do it right, you have to spend a lot of time with it. And I think that that's a really good lesson in life. So if you want to be a good parent, you better spend a lot of time with your kid. If you want to be good at life, you better spend a lot of time inside your own life. If you want to be a good gardener, you really have to spend time with each plant, right? So all of these things keep on sort of teaching me the same lesson, which is um, you can't just touch and go with things and have them, you know, sort of reveal um, their value or, or their depths or their meaning. So in poetry is basically the art of spending time on one thing. So, so in my obsession journal, one of the things that I've started doing is um, there's Stephen's poems, 13 ways, Wallace Stevens' poem, 13 ways of looking at a blackbird. 
And so it's 12 little stanzas that are basically stanzas about how the imagination works, but as stand-in for the imagination, you have a blackbird. And so in order to slow myself down and really think and see and feel the things that Wallace Stevens is saying, I've just been drawing little pictures of each of the blackbird stanzas. And so a poem that normally you're like, oh, a short little poem, I'll spend five minutes on it. Because I have to, I'm not saying that this is great art. Don't be confused by that. I mean, inspired stick figures will work for this exercise, okay? So what you're doing though, is you're doing something visual or something visceral or something in response to the work that makes you stay with the poem longer, right? It's kind of like people, right? In order to give people enough time, you like do things like go to movies together, <laughs> eat dinner together, right? You do something else with the person in order for you to really commit the time to spending it with that other person. And I think that poetry kind of needs it too. So this is my little poetry date with Wallace Stevens. Every day I take another little section of that poem and I start illustrating it so I can be with it for a more focused and long duration than if I was like, oh, I read this poem and now poem done. Poem is never done. All right, so that was an obsession. The obsession book was more about things in your life that you came across. But now I'm going to invite you guys to dig even deeper and find a poet. For me, I've been listening to other um, poets and who they read. And so a poet that I love very, very much is Suzanne Lummis. And a poet that she recently talked about is Lawrence uh, Rabb. I hope I'm saying his name right, Lawrence Rabb. And so I don't know his work, but for some reason, um, just the couple of lines that I heard from him, he really spoke to me. And so now I'm gonna make a commitment to Lawrence Rabb and I'm going to spend time with his books and his poems um, I'm going to do research into whatever I can find as far as like people doing reviews or him giving readings. So basically, <laughs> I'm just going to go wherever I can find a little bit more Lawrence Rabb. And so for now, for these exercises, since he's the, the focus of my obsession right now, all of our prompts for the next four weeks are based off of his poems. And so... Um, so let's begin. So that is your first assignment, actually, first Friday assignment. So before I go any further into the other Fridays, let me just begin and end this first Friday with you. Find a poet, one poet. Figure out all the books that they've written. Get those books, read those books. Figure out which of, which of the poems within those collections are your favorite and then spend additional time with each of those poems. So that might mean memorizing one. It might mean writing your own sort of response poem to whatever, whatever writing they, they provided you. Or it could be, like I said, like illustrating one of their poems. Whatever slows you down enough that each and every stanza begins to take a place in your life, that's what you gotta do. And that's our first Friday. Find a poet, go after him. All right, thanks. First Friday done, yeah. Whew. First Friday.